sort of because I don't actually see you but yeah y'all know what I'm talking about anyway uh gonna be back been gone for a little while and uh been doing some cool stuff uh in particular I got to go see uh Matt Joe and Becky from pre-recorded live over in Ohio so it was a big surprise to Matt that was a lot of fun I already talked about it on Be The BTI so I won't go over the whole thing again but uh it was really cool to be able to just you know help somebody out and just just I guess with your presence I don't know it was cool to see him you know um, right after he, he um, was going through a difficult time but he's doing a lot better now and I'm, I'm happy and I'm happy that I can go out there and actually meet him in real life we've been friends for over a year probably like around two years now and we never met in real life we've just been chatting over the internet and then um, we've been on each other's podcast before so it's really cool to see people that you know that normally I interact with virtually in real life so that was neat and uh, Ohio was really cool. I, I really liked uh, really liked Ohio. Um, some things that you miss in California is that people can be nice for no reason. <laughs> and it, most people in California don't really give a shit about each other, for the most part. I'm not saying everybody. Um, but over in Ohio, people seem to be really nice. So that, that was pretty cool. And then it had like this, you know, we went, we flew into Cleveland and then we went to Sandusky and then we went to uh, their hometown of Monroeville. And it's like a really super small town. So when I say super small, I think it was like not even 2,000 people in that town. Probably less than 1,000. <laughs> it was like not very many at all. Um, so that, that was pretty cool to get like a hometown feel again because I'm always around like too many people. So to be able to drive somewhere freely is nice and not to worry about traffic or anything like that. Because like right now it's 1.30 on a Friday and I'm not even going to take the freeway right now because it's going to be too fucking packed. It's going to be just full of cars and just annoying to take the freeway so I take back roads to get home on, on Thursdays and Fridays. Um, one thing I want to talk about is that I actually have a jiu-jitsu tournament coming up. Uh, this is the first time I've competed in jiu-jitsu in almost two years to the day. The last time I competed I was still a white belt and uh, I came up short. <laughs> Yeah, my, uh, my sleeve got caught when I was breaking out of uh, this guy's guard. And I didn't know that once your sleeve gets pulled over your hand, you can have the, the ref, like, readjust you so, you know, so they can, you know, so they can put the gi back where it's supposed to be, not over your hand. And I was trying to pass the guy's guard, but I already had, like, a game plan in my hand, you know, or in my head to pass his guard and then do a straight ankle lock. And I just, I got stuck, and it just kind of messed up my whole game. And then I was kind of like wondering what happened and in the middle of doing that of thinking like what happened and what to do next the guy swept me took my back and then with seconds to go a guy rear naked choke so that was a that was a bummer but you know whatever shit happens so uh this time i'm competing at a different weight class which is going to be interesting because this is the lightest i've been in a very long time i weighed myself again this morning i was 171 pounds and i'm competing in the 181 <laughs> pound uh i guess weight limit so i'll be underweight by quite a few pounds uh but it's no big deal it shouldn't be a big deal because i'm uh, you know i used to be you know over 200 pounds so i haven't lost much muscle mass so i should be okay you know i roll with guys my size are, are bigger frequently and also guys that are smaller than me so a nice mix of people uh I think I'll, I think I'll be doing pretty good because I'm still pretty strong and I've gotten faster and my technique has gotten stronger. But you know, I'm still a little nervous about doing a tournament to be honest because it's always nervous to you know get on the big mat and have everybody looking at you and rolling with somebody you never met before and having that competition mindset. Uh, it's just it's just kind of weird, you know, being like really aggressive because I don't like being aggressive when I roll. But you kind of have to be in a tournament, you know, you have to go after the guy. So. So we'll see how, how, how I do. One thing that has been nice is I haven't had to worry about uh, weight cutting for the first time ever. Uh, usually when I compete, I have to lose weight. And this time I have to lose any weight. I was already 
when I signed up, I was like one, I think 175 already. So I was like, I could just sit here and, and be fine. But you know, I stuck with keto and intermittent fasting, and I, you know, I've been steadily steadily losing weight um, at a pretty decent pace. So I think maybe next time I do uh, a tournament, I might sign up for the 168 pound uh, weight class. So that'd be pretty cool because that mean I'll, have, I'll probably have to be around 165 pounds because you have to be you, you weigh in with a gi on um, if, if if I do gi so uh, yeah I think that'd be cool to get down to that weight and see what I look like at that weight so I think I look I look pretty good now you know at 171 uh, it looks like I'm in pretty decent shape I've got pretty decent muscle mass you know like I said my energy is still there I don't feel tired or weak or anything so and I've been rolling you know pretty at a pretty good pace with people you know uh, for you know multiple rounds just to make sure I'm ready to go uh, funny thing is when I signed up for the tournament on uh, it was supposed to be a end of the um, the end of signups was supposed to be on Thursday or last Friday or something like that so I looked on last Friday when it was you know last day and I had four people in my weight class including me and then I looked the other day and all of a sudden there was eight I'm like what the fuck so <laughs> there's eight people eight people in my weight class now so uh, I think that gonna amount to I think three matches pretty sure three matches to gold so I'll just take them one match at a time you know do my best and hopefully I do I do well so I'm, I'm looking forward to it see, see how well I do see how well I've progressed in jiu-jitsu I think that's one thing that tournaments are good for is to see like where you stack up against other belts um, against other people at your same skill level relative skill level and relative age uh, I'll be probably one of the older guys in my in my age division because I'm a master two which I think is between 35 and 40 I'm pretty sure something like that so and I'm 38 so that'll be fun either way I mean I, I feel better than I felt than when I was in my 20s to be honest with you um, my body feels good I'm not sore anything like that I've got a pretty good mindset so that, that should be that should be pretty neat uh, other than that uh, not really a whole lot well, actually what's, what else has been going on oh we're going to do, for Black and the Black Times Infinity, we're going to do a whiskey and cigar night over at the Ohlone Cigar Lounge in Fremont, California on, I believe it's November 17th at like 7 p.m. or something like that. Uh, I believe uh, Prodigy just signed up, or just reserved a table for us today. I just got the invite, so that should be fun. So if you want to meet anybody from Black and the Black Times Infinity in real life and you live in the Bay Area, Feel free to come out to uh, Ohlone Cigar Lounge on the 17th uh, to see us in real life and have a couple of drinks and a couple of cigars. So, cool thing is, is that I actually know uh, some of the owners that own the cigar shop because they used to work for the company that I originally worked for um, about seven years ago. And basically, what happened is they got bought out by a, a large company and all their stocks had already vested. So, they paid out all their stocks. And so, some of them became. Uh, quite wealthy in a short amount of time so <laughs> they just uh, five friends decided to I think it's four or five friends decided to open up a cigar shop in Fremont and it's a really nice cigar shop too by the way it's got a really nice feel to it uh, it's really cool and it's funny because the guy that I'm friends with one of the guys that owns the shop he had kept asking me you know telling me to go to go down the shop it's really cool and I was like ah you know cigars whatever one cigar shop is they're usually smoky and shit like that and I, I didn't really want to go and then I finally went, and I was like, wow, I mean, this is really nice. Like, it's really well ventilated. Uh, the people that work there are very knowledgeable on cigars. They have a wide variety of cigars. You can bring your own booze there, which is pretty cool. They don't sell booze. And then next door, there is a decent uh, barbecue place. Decent for California. So if you're, like, from Texas or Kansas City or some shit like that, it's probably not going to be up to your level. But it's a decent barbecue for California. It's called the Smoking Pig, and it's in Fremont. You can actually order food from there and they deliver it right next door so that, that's pretty neat and they have tvs and all that stuff too and uh, if you're part of their they have like this cigar club thing that you can sign up for that has basically you can get your own little locker there and you can leave like cigars and booze or whatever in those little lockers and it's pretty cool i think you get discounts too i think it's called the the herf or hef something like that club it's a pretty cool idea so yeah definitely looking forward to that because i've been a a fan of whiskey now ever since uh, your boy Blue uh, put me on to uh, Old Fashions. So I like Old Fashions now and uh, usually they call for sugar but I just use some stevia instead of sugar 
uh, which is a sweetener, but it's a natural sweetener that has like, it's very low on the glycemic index, so it's no carbs. I use a little bit of that instead of sugar, and it's uh, pretty much just as good as far as I'm concerned. And I've been drinking those every now and again. I, I drank a bunch for a while, then I had to cut down because I have this problem um, basically with my pan pancreas. Actually, it's with the whole biliary tree. I have a, what's called biliary tr tree dysfunction. So there's like this tube that connects your pancreas to your your pancreas, your liver, and your gallbladder, all to your stomach. And at the bottom, there's this thing, thing called the sphincter rhodi. And mine gets stuck closed sometimes. And I don't know why. And when it gets stuck closed, the first thing that happened was all these gastric juices got stuck in my gallbladder, which basically destroyed my gallbladder. And so I had to get that removed. But uh, the thing was that after they removed my gallbladder, I got pancreatitis like a whole bunch of times in the span of a year. So what was happening is that that the sphincter of Odie was we had stuck closed, and instead of getting stuck in my uh, gallbladder, everything would get back up into my pancreas. Well, if things can't go, you know, if things can't go into my stomach, my pancreas, the pancreas will basically start get, digesting itself, and it's super fucking painful. It's literally the the worst pain I've felt in my entire life. It's like being set on fire and ran over at the same time. It's it's really bad, um, and so. I ended up changing my diet, and one of the changes in my diet was uh, going lower carb and then eventually finding the ketogenic diet, which I talk about all the fucking time, um, and also kind of cutting back on alcohol. So what I noticed, though, is that I, you know, I started drinking more and more booze over the past few weeks ago, and I, and I got, I didn't have that really bad pancreatitis feeling for like a real long time, and then all of a sudden, uh, one day I was driving uh, my daughter to her daycare provider, and it came back when I was driving. It was like really fucking bad. I almost had to pull over and, uh, and call an ambulance. But luckily it only lasted for a few minutes and I and it, it sub subsided right before I was about to pull over and, and call an ambulance. So I just gotta, I guess, keep check on, you know, what I'm consuming a little better sometimes, you know? So I kind of forgot that that stuff even happened until it, it happened to me again. And I was like, man, this like took me back to the, to the dark times, you know, back in like, I think it was like 2011 when it was like really bad when I was basically I had to deal with that pain almost almost once a week and it was it was pretty bad I was in and out of the hospital in and out of the ER for for a while and funny enough that's kind of how me and K-Mac kind of grew closer together because <laughs> I was in and out of the uh, ER and she was she was always there for me so that that went a long way that's a whole whole other story though so yeah this uh I think this one is going to be kind of a shorter podcast i'm gonna add in some video from when i actually i might i might add in some video to when i visited uh prl people uh, into this one and then some other stuff uh maybe like how i did in the tournament later on because i'm probably gonna edit this on monday i think yeah that probably that sounds good so i'm not gonna do it on sunday um but yeah so hope you liked this podcast sorry it was a little bit shorter than usual but be honest with you, I got a whole bunch of stuff in my mind that has to do with the tournament, and I'm just trying to focus on that. So, uh, thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys next time. Wow! All right, I'm back. So this is going to be an extended episode, I guess, because before I said it was going to be kind of short, and I decided to make it a little bit longer. Um, talk about what happened over the weekend. As you can see, I changed clothes because it's a different day, but whatever. Movie magic, right? Or cinematography magic, anyway. So actually, let me close my moonroof because I noticed that sometimes when I'm filming these, they get a huge uh, lens flare from the moonroof. So it's closing now. So yeah, this weekend I had the uh, the U.S. Open and I got silver. <laughs> so it was a pretty awesome day for me. Uh, I was gone for two years from jiu-jitsu competitions and it was nice to come back and and do rather well so uh, I had three matches in the tournament I was in the 181 pound weight class and I think they dropped me down um, into the master one division because uh, normally I'm master two which is between I think it's 35 years old and 40 but I'm pretty sure they put me in the um, the younger division which is fine by me I, I really don't care because I, I roll with younger guys anyway and to be honest somebody that's 30 probably the same amount of I guess physical fitness as I, I have anyway so um, I feel good coming into the tournament uh, like I said before you know I didn't have to cut weight this time for the first time ever because I'm doing the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting you guys hear me talk about it all the time 
Uh, I didn't eat because I was I stayed fasted for the tournament. So it was, it was nice. You know, the last time I ate was like I think it was like seven o'clock the day before, and my um, my matches started at eleven fifteen. So. I knew I had plenty of time, you know, before I started maybe getting a little hungry. I had until basically around 2 o'clock is when I normally eat, and even then I could push that back by a few hours. So normally I'm not, I don't really need to eat until, how about turn this thing off? I don't, I don't start getting really hungry until like probably like 4 o'clock the next day after I, you know, whatever, whatever time before uh, the next day, or I'm sorry, the previous day. So if I ate at like, you know, before 8 o'clock the previous day, I don't really, really feel the need to eat until about four, but I usually eat at around two, so so I don't like feeling hungry, you know. Anyway, so you know I was feeling good. They called me up. I weighed in with uh, 177 pounds with the Gion. The weight limit was 181 pounds, you know, with the Gion, so I was definitely good there. Um, felt really nice. Drank a little bit of water. Had some pre-workout stuff. Um, made sure to take some Alpha Brain in the morning. Got to make sure that. You know, I can think think quickly. I think I mentioned it before on this podcast that I like taking Alpha Brain, which is a nootropic. It's a cognitive cognitive enhancer, and it's probably like, probably my favorite supplement to take for jujitsu, only because thoughts come faster. I get in the flow state, which is the the alpha state, or I think it's called the alpha state. I can get in that state much quicker when I'm using Alpha Brain. Um, when I went to my matches, people kept asking me, you know, what game plan do I have? But honestly, I didn't I didn't have a game plan. I like to keep my mind blank when I'm rolling uh, and just take whatever somebody gives to me because right now if, what, once I get in that flow state if I have a game plan and my game plan doesn't work out then I'm kind of screwed so I'll leave my mind blank honestly it serves me better that's just me I don't know about other people it just serves me better so oh, that's exactly what I did my first match came up and uh, I pretty much put on a, a half guard clinic on the guy so I, I I pulled, um, I went to do go for a takedown, which is uh, one that I learned recently from uh, my friend and training partner Tony, he's a brown belt, brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, he's also a black belt in Judo, so he has this really cool, uh, it's kind of like a lapel drag, so basically you, you grab the opposite side lapel and you, you drag them down uh, to the ground, and if you pull them hard enough, they kind of come off their feet pretty easily, and uh, what was nice is because, you know, I'm going at the 181 pound weight class, is that pretty much all my opponents felt really, really light to me. And they didn't feel, you know, that strong. But that's only because I'm used to weighing, you know, 200 pounds or above. And, you know, um, I'm used to rolling with guys around that size too. I'm even though, you know, I co I, I train with with any, you know, body type. But I used to train with mostly heavier guys. Um, my friend Mr. X that I trained with, uh, I used to train with him probably the most out of anybody. He was around my same weight. He was right around 200 pounds. Right, right now he's a little over 200 pounds. Um, so I'm used to his weight and strength and he's he's very very strong um he's he's stronger than yeah he's stronger than me especially his legs like his legs are ridiculous um but yeah he's, he's stronger than me so i'm used to his level of strength um when i'm rolling with somebody usually um and some other folks too we have a lot of strong people at the gym even just for their size they're strong um, but anyway back to the match my first match i took the guy down with a lapel drag and i ended up pulling basically half guard because i didn't get i didn't pop up fast enough to get him um, on his back so I just immediately pulled half guard um, and then I sunk in the lockdown and I w immediately went to deep half um, from the half from the lockdown uh, I went also for the electric chair I got it and then I remember I put him in the electric chair but I couldn't remember if it was legal for, or for me or not to do so I put him in the electric chair but I didn't go for the submission I just used the I used that position just to sweep him. So I got the sweep pretty easily. Um, got on top, was working from side control. Um, I was wondering what to do. He was playing really good defense, but I had a really, I, pretty solid uh, side control on him. So he wasn't really going anywhere. Um, so he's, you know, he was hanging on trying to try to get out, but he wasn't getting out from underneath me unless I really wanted him to. And I didn't want to stall, so I had to make sure to start setting stuff up. So I decided to um, start setting up the ninja choke which is a choke that I do where I use my own lapel to choke my opponent. Um, the reason why I did that is because he wasn't really giving up one of his arms. Um, ideally, in side control, I, I'll go for one of his arms, usually a Kimura, Americana, or a straight arm lock in the in-between transition. But uh, he was keeping his arms in pretty close, so I couldn't really uh, grab onto an arm, or even a far side arm where I couldn't do it because of the way he was hanging on to me. 
So I, uh, I looked back away from him towards his feet, and then I took my lapel out and put it in my in between my teeth. Um, that way I could hide my attack. And so I was doing pretty well, and he, but he would, he kept his arm between me and my lapel, so I, I couldn't set up the way I wanted it to. Um, but eventually I fed um, my lapel back to my, my hand that I had free because my other hand was underneath his, his head. And then I fed that, um, my lapel underneath his arm and then to my, my hand. But I gave him a little bit too much space when I did that and, uh, and he popped up. And so there was a, there was a mad scramble and I, I just did the same thing again. You know, I put him back in the lockdown, did the same thing to a, um, to a, to the electric chair sweep. So it worked out well, got the sweep again. I ended up beating him on points. I think it was like eight or nine points, something like that. Um, I really wanted to get a submission, but I was like, whatever, you know, I, I won the match. Um, he didn't get any points on me. So it, that was pretty cool. Um, I felt really good. I never felt tight or anything like that. I felt great. You know, I just felt like it was another day, you know, rolling. So took a break. Um, I, there was like two matches in between my next match. So waited for a little bit. My next match came up my, my second opponent. Um, I did the same thing with the, um, the lapel drag takedown. Um, this time I think I ended up in quarter guard. Actually, no, I ended up on top, but I ended up in his half guard or something like that. And he ended up getting um, a really weird, like, lasso guard on me. But he used the lasso guard on his own leg, so it was really weird. So we had, like, a weird position. I hope I got a video of this because um, I think my friend Matt, who's been on the podcast before, pretty sure he recorded all three of my matches. So hopefully he did because this one was a really cool one. So he did a uh, he was doing, like, a lasso guard, but he had his own leg in between my legs. But he had his lasso on his leg. So it was, like, really weird. So it was, like, difficult for me to, like, get out of it. But I wasn't really worried about it because... I mean, it wasn't going to sweep me because his his lasso or his lapel was on his leg and not mine, even though I was caught in between, like, his body. But he couldn't really sweep me because if he tried to, like, flip me over, his leg was stuck. So I was just like, whatever. I guess I'll just deal with this. And so the way I dealt with it is I decided to um, to attack one of his legs with a straight ankle lock um, because his leg was basically stuck in that position. So I started attacking a straight ankle lock, and um, it wasn't tight at first. And uh, I heard my, my coach Mauricio tell me to go get over to my left side because it was I had his um, his leg on on my left side, um, which is what I was trying to do. But my legs were kind of caught up, and eventually I got him over to my left side um, so I can attack harder. And so at first he was like, "Nah, you know," he he, he said that he was good. Um, and then when I got over to the left side a little bit more, like I saw a look on his face change when I when I <laughs> applied some more force. But he wasn't tapping. He's a tough guy. So I, I didn't think he was going to tap from, from this attempt. And I didn't get the, the full range of motion because the way he had that lapel uh, set up with his leg, I, I couldn't, and he was grabbing my gi too, so I couldn't use um, as much force as I wanted on his leg or on his ankle to like go all the way back like the way I wanted it to um, without using a whole lot of strength. And I, I don't like to force submissions like that with a whole lot of strength. So I decided just to sit in the position for a little while while keeping like, you know, his leg stuck in that straight ankle lock position. So he remembered that I'm going to attack legs. And I, <laughs> I did this on purpose so he would know that, uh, you know, I, I can attack legs. And so I sat there for a good 30 seconds with pressure on his on his ankle. And then um, eventually he let go of his lapel and I, I popped out and I ended up in his half guard. And so as soon as I got to his half guard, he was keeping his legs in a different position. So I knew that he was uh, maybe concerned about his leg. And so I immediately... Uh, I jumped for a Kimura out of his half. I jumped literally out of his half guard into a Kimura, um, but it ended up being like a straight arm lock. So it's a, it's kind of a cool submission that I do all the time is that I'll, I'll jump for the Kimura grip, but I don't go for the Kimura. I'll, I'll instead extend the arm all the way out into what's basically an arm lock. or like, It's like an arm bar. And so he tapped for me real quick, and I felt his arm pop or his elbow pop, and I felt kind of bad because um, I didn't want to hurt. I mean, I know it's weird you're in a competition, but I don't want to hurt somebody. Um, but the guy said his, his elbow was okay. You know, he's, he even told me, like, it was a really cool submission that I did. Even the ref said it was a pretty cool arm bar. And I was like, oh, you know, thanks, man. So um, so I got, I got a submission, you know, that was, that was neat. And then um, I had to wait again, you know, for my next match. And in between me waiting between that for my next match, was, which was going to be the finals, which I didn't know until I was walking up there. I didn't know it was the finals. I try not to think about like where I was place-wise, so I didn't want to mess me up. And then um, in between my matches, the, the ref had a break, and so I, I asked the ref about the uh, electric chair because um, technically it's a it's a it's a groin attack and it can be a, a calf attack. 
if uh, the lockdown is tight enough. And I didn't know if it was legal. And so he literally looked it up on the website, the BJJ Tour website. And he said, yeah, it's totally legal. And so I kept that in the back of my mind, you know, the next time if I get in the, uh, the lockdown electric chair just to go for the submission uh, first before taking the sweep. So next match starts up. Uh, it's finals. I'm with this dude. He's a pretty, pretty cool guy. Um, I go for the same uh, takedown lapel drag again because I had success with it. So I figured, fuck it, why not? Um, and this time we ended up um, in a scramble again. And I'm in, uh, he's in my quarter guard. And um, I'm trying to get on top. And then as soon as I get my arms around him so I can get complete uh, my, uh, my sweep. Uh, I heard him say uh, something in uh, Portuguese. I'm pretty sure he said "stop, stop." The, the guy was uh, was Asian, so he, was, he wasn't Brazilian. But you know, you do jiu jitsu enough, you learn the the names, the words, and stuff in Portuguese. So, end up we're at the edge of the mat, and we had to stop to get reset. And I didn't know that. I was like, "Why does he stop moving?" And I was gonna keep going for the going for the because uh, the, the ref didn't touch me or anything. I, I didn't hear him. I think it was adrenaline because I I didn't hear him. So, um, so we go, go back to the same position. Um, in the middle you know we got reset and he scrambles and he gets up and we end up back in the standing position i go i do the lapel drag again but this time i made a fucking huge mistake because as i'm pulling him i think i might have mentioned this before but i injured my shin a couple weeks back because when i learned how to do this um when you pull the guy down you're supposed to like kind of kick a little bit his uh his leg right and that makes him misstep and then kind of fall over and a couple weeks ago I did that same lapel drag with my my friend Ali who's a really good white belt and we hit our shins on the way like I hit I basically kicked him in his shin and my fucking both of our shins like swollen after that and I couldn't fucking walk right um, for a while and so it, I thought it was probably done being swollen and tender but it wasn't the same thing happened when I was taking the guy down like I kicked him right in the goddamn shin with the the same exact spot that I hit Ali with, and it was some serious pain. I mean, I covered it up in the match, but man, it hurts so fucking bad. And uh, ended up in quarter guard again, and there was just too much pressure on my shin, and I I, I had to let go. And uh, he passed my you know my little shitty quarter guard. Um, then he uh, got into side control. I tried to escape. I gave him my back, and I was just like, oh fuck, it's all coming apart. So. <laughs> I even tried to go for my, one of my last ditch efforts when somebody's on my back. I tried to uh, bring his arm over my shoulder or underneath my arm and go for a, a really sneaky straight arm lock. That's uh, the Alamo special for uh, folks that are listening from uh, Co Fitness in Newark or in, from Mountain View. Uh, it's one of his specialties that I, that I kind of integrated into my game. But I, I, as soon as I started setting it up, his coach called it and I heard him. He's like, oh, be careful with your arm. Put your elbow back in. And I was like, God damn it. You're giving up my secrets. So I didn't get it. Uh, I pulled his arm in, and he ended up beating me by, I think it was like 11-0. I didn't get shit. So, it was all good, though. I was very happy with my, my silver medal. It's the highest medal I've ever gotten uh, in jiu-jitsu. Um, never once got tired. Um, felt like I did really good in all my matches. Except for, I mean, the last one, even though, you know, the guy beat uh, beat me, you know, I didn't get any points. I still felt like I did really good. You know, I felt like my mission was accomplished um, this time. And next time, you know, I'm going to... I'm going to start competing more now. I'm going to try to anyway, even though they're on Sundays and I work on Sundays. I'll just take them off. I need to do some no-gi competitions because, uh, to be honest, I'm better at no-gi than I am with gi. Um, but I train with gi more because of that. Um, it was it was a great, great day. Uh, even uh, the other people at my gym, they had a pretty good day too. We had a lot of medals. Um, we got people with, you know, double gold, double silvers, you know. Uh, I think we came in eighth place overall for the, uh, the U.S. Open, which is cool because we're a tiny fucking gem um, compared to the rest of these guys. I mean, we're not... I mean, we probably have less than... I'd probably say less than 500 students, probably like around 250 students, more realistic, all together if you count kids and adults, like all together. And a lot of these gyms have like thousands of students. And so for us to come in eighth place is, is pretty amazing. You know, we have a very high medal percentage uh, given the amount of people that we have in our gym. So I think that that's really cool. We're all... Um, Everybody that competes um, has what it takes to, to get that gold, and a, a lot of a lot of us took took home gold or at least a medal of some sort, gold, silver, or, or bronze. So, real happy with the way our gym did. Real happy with um, Mauricio. I was happy with his coaching. Um, one of the things that I real that I didn't realize until um, just yesterday is one of the. I mean, I already knew Mauricio was a really good coach. Don't get me wrong. 
but I just realized one of the really cool things that I like about Mauricio's uh, style of instruction is that even though he has his own style of teaching his students, um, you know, heavy pressure, uh, pressure passing, stuff like that, you know, uh, he will still cater his um, coaching style to you. And so what I, what I mean by that is, even though he instructs me, you know, on his style of jiu-jitsu, he understands that I have my own style of jiu-jitsu. And it's not something that he is ever going to use in his own game. Obviously, because, you know, he's a black belt, I'm a blue belt, but um, I still have things that I prefer to do that he's never going to do. Like, he's never going to use the lockdown. Um, he's never going to use electric chair. He's never going to, um, you know, do other things that I might do. But because he knows me so well, he knows what I'm good at, and he knows how to instruct me on how to advance positions on what I do and how to um, go for submissions that I like. And that's what I really liked hearing, hearing him in my corner is because I, I, was, I had the lockdown I mean, my first match, and I was doing the deep half, and he was instructing me on how to uh, go deeper into that deep half and which direction to roll the guy. And um, and like I said, that's I, I've never seen Mauricio really do uh, a deep half, or I've never and I've never seen him do a lockdown. And so for him to to really, you know, look at his students and then basically study us and then come up with a game plan that's based upon our skill levels and, our, and what we're good at, I think is fucking awesome. I really couldn't ask for a, a better coach in that regard. So uh, thank you, Coach Mauricio, for uh, for helping me out and helping all your students out, you know, during all of our all of our tournaments. So that was pretty cool. And I, I really want to do the absolute, um, which is basically open open weight division, um, but I just couldn't, man. My shin was fucking swollen up, and it, it honestly it hurt to walk on it, and it still hurts now. <laughs> so like if I touch it, it's still tender to the touch. Um, swelling's down a little bit more, but I can still feel like a knot literally on my actual shin bone from where I got hit. I, I, I might actually have a, a, a shin fracture. Um, I hope not. So I, maybe if, if it's still bugging me, I still feel a knot within a week. I'm just going to go to a doctor and, and get it checked out because um, I'm still training on it, but I mean, if there's something else I can do to make it better, faster, I mean, I'll, I'll do it. Even if it's like fracture, I'll still probably train, but I'll just take it easy on my legs. So yeah, so th I mean, that's it as far, as far as the U.S. Open went super happy you know two two years off came back like I came back with a vengeance you know and I, and I felt good you know I got to do things my way and uh, yeah felt felt real good wasn't even tired <laughs> so but wasn't tired at any point I had my matches so re really happy uh, so yeah if, if you're thinking about competing in jiu-jitsu if you're a, a newer white belt or even if you're an upper belt uh, just do it you know just just compete it's it's really cool to do to see where you stand with, um, to see where you stand with your peers, basically, and people you've never rolled with. Basically, what the U.S. Open did for me was validate that you know I'm, I'm a pretty decent blue belt, which I was pretty sure I was because you know I, I do decently well at, at my gym. But um, to to be able to, to to compete like that when you know that the lights are on you and you're on a big mat and you know everybody's looking at you, you know I, that's that's really cool to do, and I think it really can up your your skills. And it's, it's really going to open your eyes to what you're deficient in, if anything, you know, uh, when you're training. So that's my advice to everybody. If you haven't entered a tournament, if, if you're nervous uh, about entering a tournament, good, because <laughs> you should be. Honestly, I, you know, I get nervous before tournaments uh, because you never know how things are going to go. And to be honest, uh, losing is humiliating. And, you know, anybody else that says it's not is probably lying because <laughs> losing sucks nobody likes to lose um don't get me wrong i i, I like to learn from losing but uh it sucks to be a loser <laughs> uh that's just being totally honest with you i mean but you know this definitely is a reminder of like what I, what i need to work on even though you know my shin was fucked up but i mean i still should have been able to to get up from that quarter guard or done something else and uh protect it protected my back I have no excuse for me giving up my back I was even working on back escapes uh, leading up to the tournament because I knew that every now and again I give up my back a little too easily and I still fucked it up even though I was in some pain I still should be able to defend my back over that uh, over that back attack um, he was going for submissions for my on my back too but he, he wasn't getting those because I, I, I have pretty good you know back submission defense at least I just need to work on my escapes so I'm gonna keep working on those a little bit more and um, yeah so, 
yeah, like I said, compete if you can and uh, have fun. So I'm close to where I need to be. So thanks for listening. Hope this has been a cool, informative podcast, mostly about jujitsu. So uh, yeah, keep it rolling, y'all. Peace.